Hello and welcome to the Situation Report today. Glad to have you with us. And you may notice if you watch this show, now if you're listening, you can't see it. You need to go and check it out on Salem now, and uh, you can watch there as well. But if you are watching, you know that we're in a different place today. We are at the Woodlands Resort in the Woodlands, Texas. And this is a very special event for the Mighty Oaks Foundation. We are here to do our annual fundraising gala. And this is an opportunity for us to uh, really rejoice in what has happened. And we look forward to what is going to happen. So many friends and supporters here. Wonderful event, but we have the opportunity to record here today as well. And glad to have you with us. This is, of course, the show where we do our best every week to give you the information you need to navigate an ever-changing culture. And I don't need to convince you that culture is changing. It is ever changing, but here we are. Uh, my name is Jeremy Stonlicker here with Chad Robichaux, and I'll introduce our guest in just a second. But as we look to the culture around us and we consider all of the things that are happening, and uh, I, I think I've mentioned this every week for the last couple of weeks, it, it feels like there are so many things happening right now, so many things changing right now, the norms that are no longer norms, things are changing around us all of the time. So many different things, though, that you can't find a place to focus. There's not one thing that you can look at and say, that's what we need to do. That's what we need to deal with. Things are happening around us all of the time, and so we do our best to bring the right information for you to make the right decisions. Today's topic is one that is uh, very important to me and I think to many of our listeners and viewers. Uh, the topic today is Christian engagement and culture. As Christians, as people of faith, and I know that topic of faith is a broad topic, but as people of faith, as Christians, those who would hold to a biblical set of principles for life and practice, uh, we look at a culture that's changing and we have to ask questions like, what should we do? <laughs> uh, how do we interact with a culture that's changing so fast? Maybe we should just step back and protect what we have. Maybe we should engage in uh, an unkind way, which a lot of folks are doing. How exactly do we navigate this culture around us? That's a big question and uh, very, very grateful to have our guest with us today. Our guest is Steve Green, and uh, many of you will know Steve. He is the president of Hobby Lobby place that my wife frequents. Oh, and so good. he is the president of Hobby Lobby, um, also the chairman of the Museum of the Bible. Uh, a few weeks ago, maybe, maybe more than a month ago now, we did a set of interviews from the Museum of the Bible. Uh, incredible place that must be visited. But tonight, Steve, you are the uh, keynote speaker for the Mighty Oaks Gala, probably the biggest speaking event you've ever had, I would imagine. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and uh, man, you've been such a friend to us and um, been such an encouragement to us. Just so glad to have you and your wife Jackie with us. It's awesome to be here. Well, thank you. I'm honored to be here and excited about this evening. Yes, sir. Uh, so many things to, to talk about. We're going to dive into this, but before we get into the specific questions, uh, your family has a long history of having a very strong Christian position, very strong faith tradition. Um, and you have continued to lead that. We could talk about the Museum of the Bible. Um, but more specific to you, uh, what is your faith story? And I don't think that's something that uh, we often talk about. Well, my faith story really is uh, a, a heritage that has been passed down to yeah. me. My grandparents uh, served the Lord. They taught my parents to follow the Lord and uh, regularly went to church. Uh, I as well uh, would do that. We would go to church every time the doors yeah, were opened, as right, they would say, right. and uh, uh, would go to youth camps as a regular part of uh, my summers. And uh, at an early age, just uh, accepted Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, got baptized as a child. And uh, I say that uh, when I graduated high school, I knew what I wanted to do. I wound up going into the business. So I never had those rebellious college years because right, I never sure. went to college. Right. Um, but uh, uh, obviously my faith has just continued to grow uh, and even to this day it's a part of uh, our, my life. Uh, same with my wife. My wife can remember uh, four year, four, at four years old in a Sunday school class kneeling down yeah. and uh, coming to Christ. So uh, it's, uh, I have been blessed tremendously by the heritage that, uh, that I have been given. That's fantastic. Hi, my name is Chad Robichaux, author of An Unfair Advantage, Victory in the Midst of Battle. In this book, I share my experiences from my time on the battlefield of Afghanistan, to my time as a professional MMA fighter, to the battle I faced when I came home from Afghanistan and was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder and suffered with anxiety, depression, and a battle with taking my own life and becoming another veteran suicide statistic. But also want to share the journey forward as I tapped into biblical principles that helped me align my life with being the man that I was created to be and living the life that I was created to live. So get your copy today at Amazon.com and discover an unfair advantage for the battles ahead.
we sometimes overlook how important that legacy of faith is to the generations that are coming up behind us. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, when uh, we talk about Jeremy with the introduction, talked about Christians and engaging in culture, and this culture is is changing rapidly right now. Uh, one of the things that I've always admired about you and your family is uh, is Hobby Lobby and the way you guys run Hobby Lobby. Obviously, the museum the Museum of the Bible stands as you know a testament to the Bible, so that's clear what what the Bible Museum is about. But Hobby Lobby is just you know an arts and craft store that people go to get supplies for. Uh, for different things for their homes, and but you have run it as a Christian business, and I'm sure it's, at some point you guys made a deliberate decision, your family made a deliberate decision, not just to be open and bold about your faith, but to run your business under faith principles. And uh, and there would be some that would say uh, that that should be separate. You should run your business one way, and your, and your personal life should be something different. And I think a lot of people make those decisions, personally I believe they make those decisions out of fear, especially Christians, they make them out of fear. So I wonder what would you say to those people uh, out of the deliberate decision you guys have made. Yeah, you know, I, I think that uh, from the day one when Dad started the business in uh, 1970, the retail in 72, uh, he would always say that, you know, he would op want to operate the business according to the biblical principles. And that's easy to say, but there are times when God kind of solidifies that. And there was a time in the mid-80s, uh, 1986, when my dad invited the family over, sat us down, and said he didn't know how that we would survive. Um, wow. The oil boom had busted, wow. and uh, he had always been able to figure out, you know, we got these bills coming in, we'll be able to pay that because we'll have this coming in. And, but he got to a point where he didn't see how that we would survive. And he talks about, and he's written about this in his book, that... Uh, it was a year where he was really just crying out to God, saying, God, if you want this business to survive, you're going to have to intervene because I don't know uh, how it's going to happen. And there's lessons that were learned. One, he felt like that uh, he might have been getting a little bit uh, cocky. Uh, I, hey, I can do this. We're successful. And God says, oh, you can? Well, let's see how you can do it on your own. <laughs> and it was like, okay, God, we need you. But the primary lesson is to understand that this isn't our business. Um, mm -hmm. That year, 1986 was 1985 was the one year we lost money in our in our history, which made 1986 uh, when he had the family meeting, uh, the year that he didn't know that we'd survive because all of our profits were made in the fourth quarter, and um, uh, where he was just crying out. But that year, 1986, wound up being almost twice the most profitable year we ever had. Uh, by the time you know that year was over, but during the summer, our slow times was a real trying time. So as he's crying out to God, if you want this company to survive, you'll have to intercede. Um, the, the lesson that he will still tell us today is this is not our business. We are only stewards of what God has entrusted to us. And it's easy to say that, but it's another thing to actually uh, live it out sure. that way. Yeah. And uh, so uh, there, there are times uh, that those lessons became very real, and that being one of those examples uh, in our history. Yeah. So you make a decision like that, and... Um, God continues to bless, but then there's, there are those inflection points. One of the areas or one of the moments where Hobby Lobby really stood up was a well-known Supreme Court case where ultimately it was about Christian business owners and Christian businesses not violating their Christian principles. Can you talk about that a little bit um, and, and then why it was so important for you but for the company to take a stand at that moment in time? Well, and that was really the second family meeting that we had. Mm. Uh, the first one was uh, me, my wife, my brother, my sister, my parents, a couple cousins. This one included uh, Gen 3, as we refer to yeah. parents, me, my brother, sister, and our kids. And um, uh, my dad wanted to hear from everybody. Uh, here is the situation we're facing is that the government is t telling us so we have to freely provide abortifacients to our employees. And what should we do? Uh, mm. And kind of started with the youngest and everybody uh, uh, was able to have some input. And we, we felt like that if we were to draw the line in the sand and say no, there was three options that God had. Uh, Daniel was two examples. He was told to eat the king's meat and he said, no, I can't. He made an appeal and the problem was averted. Later he was told you can't pray to your God. And it wound up sending him to the lion's den. God showed up and delivered. So yeah. those were two options. But sometimes God th has a third uh, tool that he uses in his toolbox. Sometimes he does allow suffering. Job did lose it all. Yeah. Stephen was stoned. Yeah. So whether the problem was averted, delivered, or suffered, we didn't know. But the vote ultimately was unanimous. We can't be a part of taking life. If, in fact, this is God's business yeah. and we're stewards of it, as our first family meeting yeah. was, yeah. it was solidified for us there, yeah. 
then we have to trust God. And whatever the outcome is, we felt like we were in good hands. It might have been averted, delivered, or suffered. Mm. Uh, God could have taken it, but it's his company and we're just stewards. So we trusted him to say, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're okay with whatever you choose. And uh, we were blessed that there was a win at the Supreme yep. Court and the fines that were not sustainable, we didn't have to face. So uh, we, we were grateful uh, for our nation uh, that our founders built, the protections that we have in our country for religious freedoms. And, um, uh, and, and we're thankful for the prayers that we had from people sure. all across the country. We're in debt to people all over this country because yeah. everywhere we went, people said they were praying for us and we're, we're grateful. That's awesome. Yeah. Incredible. I wanted to take a minute to let our audience know about the work that we do through an incredible veterans nonprofit called the Mighty Oaks Foundation. Many of our nation's warriors struggle with the hardships of military service and reintegration back into civilian life. Often they leave broken homes in their aftermath and comprise one of the most at-risk groups for suicide with over 20 veterans who take their lives every single day. Mighty Oaks tackles this critical issue with our faith-based peer-to-peer resiliency and recovery programs offered at no cost to our honored servicemen and women at beautiful ranches across the United States. Mighty Oaks has one of the highest success rates of any program available anywhere. Visit MightyOaksPrograms.org to learn more about how you can make a direct impact in the lives of our servicemen and women to help them find a new life purpose through hope in Christ. Again, that's MightyOaksPrograms.org. Witnessing the transformation that these men and women go through is absolutely incredible. There are no words to describe seeing warriors restored to the lives they were created to live, changing their legacies for eternity. Your support is needed now more than ever and will ensure that our programs are here for our warriors who are in desperate need. Again, the website is MightyOaksPrograms.org. Yeah, um, currently we're, we're in this cancel culture society and um, you know people are scared to speak out for things. Uh, people are scared to use the, the platforms they have. And um, obviously like you know, we at Mighty Oaks, we have a decent sized platform. You being president of Hobby Lobby and the founder of the Museum of the Bible, you guys get such a large platform. What would you say to people that don't have the, the platform that, that, that you would have or the resources to be able to defend themselves that are, are scared to speak out right now and stand up for truth? Yeah, I think there are uh, two extremes. Some people are go quiet and and, uh, and sometimes may compromise in order not to say something, and that's not right. And there are some that are out there looking to right. with yeah. a megaphone and trying to trying make to noise. And, yeah, right. uh, yeah. so manufactured <clears throat> manufactured outrage. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, right. so I, I think that people just have to understand that we need to. Uh, Follow, follow God. Uh, we are in a challenging time and uh, hear from God. There are times that it's we have to stand up. We weren't looking for that fight. Uh, it came to us and we were told we have to provide it. And so we had to, to uh, take the stand that the only option that we knew we had and that was to sue the government that we love. Um, so it, it, I think it just takes wisdom of knowing here's uh, uh, a, a, a time, obviously, if it's calling a person to compromise, you have to say, I can't compromise. I'm, yeah. I'm I'm going to, yeah. I serve a God that is capable and able to have trust that he will be with you. That doesn't guarantee uh, that it's going to go well. Yeah. Um, and like I said, one of the options is that you, you could lose it. But, uh, uh, but knowing and having a faith in the God that we serve, that he's going to be with us, whatever we face. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. We are at a cultural moment. I'm sure we've been here before, but we're living through this right now uh, where people are looking for hope. And there are a lot of very hopeless people. That's part of what we deal with and part of what we're going to talk to tonight during our event. Uh, when you think about hope, um, kind of two questions. How would you define hope? What, what is hope? And then where can people find that? People who are searching so desperately right now, where can they find hope? Yeah, I think that uh, there, are, there are times and today uh, in our world, uh, it is easy to get very discouraged because there's a lot of things that are not going well that are not going right. And um, it can be very discouraging. And I, I, I think that if it wasn't for the fact that we have a source that God has uh, given us in his word, he tells us he is in control, yeah. he is sovereign, he knows what the end of this book looks sure, like, right. and he is there. Right. Um, 
I've, I've said before, God is not afraid of us going through anything because he can be with us and then help us endure anything. He's not afraid if we face a lion's den or he's not afraid if we uh, go through a firing furnace. Um, he can go with us. So knowing that God is there, knowing that he has given us great promises to always be with us um, is what gives me hope. There's times when in that discouraging, I have to rely on the fact that, but God, I know you're there and I know you're not wringing your hands uh, and I trust in you. That doesn't give us uh, a pass to do all that we're called to do. We have to be about what God's called us to do and be in the fight for good. Uh, but in the end, uh, we, we know that he's still uh, on his throne. That's awesome. Steve, we could talk all day, but we've got other things to do. <laughs> and I know you've got other meetings, and we've got our, our event tonight. But uh, thank you so much for spending some time with us. My pleasure. We're thank very, you for very grateful for your influence and for all that you've done uh, for us, just your friendship and, and so forth, but what you guys have done um, nationally and on the, the big stage. So thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. Yes, sir. Keep up the good work on your side as well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So appreciative for uh, folks like Steve and his wife and the many folks involved with Hobby Lobby, of course. Uh, we sometimes see the darkness <laughs> that it feels is overtaking our culture and uh, our country, but we know there are many, many folks who are standing up for Christian principles and Christian values and those things that are important to us. And I'm grateful that they would. Uh, the perspective that their business is not their business, they're simply the stewards over what God has given to them. Such an important perspective because it really helps them then to stand up when someone needs to stand up, to use the platform that they have to be a voice for so many of us. And I'm grateful for that. Uh, a lot of great things that were said there. I want to give you today's situation report. Uh, this is a summary of that conversation, some of the big points. I, I think the first one is this, and I just kind of alluded to it. Our business is not our business. I think for those that don't run a business like Hobby Lobby, that's most of us, we can say our life is not our life. What we have is not ours. We are merely the stewards of what God has given to us. That is such an important perspective. As God gifts us, as God gives us opportunities, as He uh, perhaps even gives us a platform, we need to realize those are not ours. We're the stewards that He has placed those things in our hands to take care of for Him. And if we keep that perspective, it eliminates so much of the anxiety and the difficulty that comes with having the things that God allows us to enjoy. Uh, the second part is this, and I don't think, again, this is a, uh, a new, uh, new news to anyone in our audience, that there is difficulty. And when difficulty comes, Christian people, understanding that what we have is not ours, we're merely stewarding over it, uh, we need to stand up as the stewards of what God has given to us. Maybe that's your life. Maybe that is your family. Uh, maybe it is your business or a job within a business. Perhaps it's something else that you have influence over. We stand up when the trouble comes because we are stewarding that for God. And uh, again, such an important perspective. I, I love that Steve said we don't need to go looking for a fight, but when the fight comes, we need to be, be prepared to deal with it and uh, grateful for that. Uh, the final thing, we talked about hope. I, I like to end a conversation, if I can, by talking about hope and what is hope and what does that look like. Uh, there is hope for the believer. There is hope for the one that has a relationship with God. There's hope for the one that hangs on to Scripture. Why? Because God is with us. And when we know that God is with us, we may not have all of the answers. We may not understand all of the whys and uh, what fors. But what we do know is that we have a God who's bigger than all of it, a God who is outside of time and space, a God who cares for us and will go through whatever it is we're dealing with, with us. And there is hope to be found in that. Uh, Christians should not be hopeless at this moment in time. As difficult as it is, we should be full of hope because of God who is our hope. And that is today's situation report. Uh, I'm going to end in just a second, but before I do, uh, I want to... Remind you once again, at the beginning I said we're in a different place doing a different thing. I want to remind you as we conclude today that uh, we, here at the Situation Report, represent an organization, the Mighty Oaks Foundation. Many of you are familiar with the work that we do, and many of you support the work that we do. But the Mighty Oaks Foundation is an organization, a nonprofit, that supports veterans and active duty service members and first responders and their spouses. Those are the categories of folks that we support, and we're so grateful to do that. The men and women who have served us and many who are still serving us. The families who support them as they serve. We, as an organization, have the opportunity to serve them. We're grateful for that opportunity. So many of the men and women who come to us are those who are struggling with trauma. 
Trauma because of the work that they have done, the service that they have rendered to their nation or their community. Many who are dealing with trauma from childhood that they carried into their military or police or fire service and are still really trying to work through. So many folks with so many hurts and so many difficulties, and thankfully we have an opportunity. Again, remember, this isn't ours. It's something God has given to us to steward over. We have the opportunity to steward over hope to steward over purpose and direction and renewal for so many who have been hurt in so many ways. And we're grateful to do that. Our programs are free to those who attend. We have a week-long program that folks can come to one of our facilities and we spend a week with them, helping them to deal with what happened behind them and to then turn their attention to what will happen in the future. We then do resiliency events across the country. And thankfully, because of great supporters, we have the opportunity to provide those programs at no cost to the students. In fact, if someone needs to get to one of those locations, we'll even cover the cost of travel. Why? Because we believe that what we do is that important. Well, how do we do that? <laughs> we do that because of supporters, because of friends and supporters who understand what we do, understand how, it imp how important it is that the mission continues and who get behind us financially and get behind us in many ways physically. Perhaps you know someone that needs to attend a program like ours. Get involved. Give them our information and help them to connect to us. Maybe you want to support financially. That's what this night is about for us so that we can fund next year and get as many men and women through our programs as need to attend. We'd love to invite you to join us there. You can find out all about us at our website, mightyoaksprograms.org, mightyoaksprograms.org. Application there, other ways to get involved, tons of information, as well as content that can be helpful to you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a great audience. Look forward to talking to you next week.